Welcome back to my channel, Mama. On today's video, we are going to be talking about a certain number of words that are pretty much thrown around in the online industry and how those words are keeping you from having a six-figure year. So get comfy, get cozy, and let's chat. Okay, we all know that there are certain words that are used in this online space. They're kind of just thrown around all the time or a lot of advice is given surrounding these particular words, which we're going to get into in a few minutes. And what I wanna do today is take each of those words, there's actually six of them that I have listed here, and I wanna just unpack them for you because I think that because us moms do business differently, we need to redefine what those words mean to us as mamas in business. And so I want to help you see how we can attach different meanings to these words as they are used in the industry that we are in so that they can actually propel us forward towards our big goals, our six figure year and beyond. So let's start with the first one. OK, the first word I have for you is hustle. You had to know that hustle was going to be on the list, right? We are always hearing about hustle, whether it is that you need to hustle to the top or the complete opposite, which is like, don't hustle, right? And I think specifically for moms, we hear it most because we don't want to be hustling, right? We are trying to keep ourselves from hustling to success, hustling towards the top. And you'll find that like even in my Instagram on my bio, it says I'm a business strategist for non-hustle moms, right? Like I don't want to hustle to the top. I think that hustling to the top means that we are leaving a lot behind. So then when we get to the top and we look down and we're like, hey, what did we actually complete? It's not really success because along the way we weren't holding our values true, right? We weren't keeping true to our values and who we are. It doesn't just, it doesn't align with what I want to create. So that being said right i don't want to hustle but what i think is happening is that because we have this like predefined idea of what it means to hustle is that moms specifically are not taking enough action to actually achieve their big goals because they're trying not to hustle and in trying not to hustle they're actually not taking enough action and they think that good because i'm not hustling but you don't have to hustle to the top you have to take action to get to the top, right? And what's happening is that you trying to honor the fact that you're not hustling in your business is making it so that you're not actually taking the action that's required to get the results that you desire. So we need to change this, right? Hustle doesn't have to be just like black and white. Like it's written in pen, it's written in marker. That is what hustle is. No, hustling is different for every single person on this planet, right? What I consider hustling, you may not. And what you consider hustling, I may not. Because we all have different situations. We all have different circumstances, beliefs, values, all of it. Right? So something that a different mom might consider hustling, like working on the weekends, I don't. Because my week doesn't look the same as her week. Right? I homeschool my children during the week. I'm with them a ton during the week. So it may be easier for me to work one of the days on the weekend, right, for a few hours. And I don't view that as hustling, like, oh my gosh, I'm working on the weekends. That's so hustle, you know, culture. No, it's just a different day of the week for me, right? I see time as fluid, right? Because I'm with my children during the week a majority of the time. So if I have some free time on the weekends, I don't think that it's hustling if I decide to work. So hustling doesn't mean working on the weekends working at night, working early mornings, working in the cracks of your day, right? You need to define what it means to hustle so that you can make sure that you're honoring what is important to you and not to society and not to anybody else, but to yourself. So redefine what hustle means to you. What would it actually mean for you to hustle to the top so that you can honor that and not do it, but still take enough action to get the desired results you're looking for. The second word that we need to look at is simplify that word that word was like made for moms in business right you need to simplify but here's the problem when people are telling you to simplify what they are expecting you to do is to figure out a way to do less right do less but still make more and that just they don't go together right here's what simplify actually means especially for us moms in business it means figuring out a smarter way to do more 
we are moms in business. We have different ways of doing business, right? Our children are our biggest distractions and our biggest motivation at the same time, right? Nobody else has to deal with anything similar, remotely similar to that. And so the way that we spend our time is important, but we still need to like appreciate and acknowledge the fact that it does require a lot to build a six figure business and beyond. And so we can't be doing less and expecting more results. We, we just can't, right? The goal is to figure out a way for you to put out the same amount of content, show up the same amount as people who are not moms in business, but doing it in a simpler, smarter way, right? So we need to redefine what simplify means. It doesn't mean doing less. You cannot do less and expect more, right? They just, they don't, they're just opposite sides of the spectrum here, right? You need to figure out a simpler way of doing more, right? That's what you're simplifying. You're simplifying your systems, your processes, your funnels. You're simplifying all of the other pieces of the puzzle so that you're still doing what's required of you to complete the results that you're trying to complete, right? To achieve that. So we're no longer trying to do less. We're trying to figure out smarter ways to do more. Word number three is consistent. Show up consistently. Okay, I'm not bashing it because we do. We have to show up consistently for our business, 100%. If you are just kind of flaking through and showing up sporadically, but you're still expecting consistent results, again, like two opposite ends of the spectrum, right? You have to be consistent to get consistent results. You cannot just be flexible and expect consistent income. It doesn't work that way. That being said, I don't think that consistent necessarily means showing up every day, right? And so what I like to attach the word consistent to is the actions I'm taking, right? I wanna have a consistent message. I wanna make sure that I'm not confusing my audience with the message that I'm putting out. It needs to be consistent. I wanna be consistent on the platforms I'm showing up on, right? I have a YouTube channel that comes out with a video twice a week. So I wanna make sure that on those days of the week, I'm being consistent and I am publishing my videos. I wanna make sure that I'm being consistent with the nurturing, right? With the networking that I'm doing. I don't want to get a new follower on Instagram, say hello to them once, and then they never hear from me again until I'm ready to sell to them, right? I want to build consistent relationships and nurture consistently. We need to make sure that we are attaching the word consistent to the right words, right? To the right actions, to what is required of us. We can't just say like consistent, show up every day. That doesn't even like, no, right? We don't have to show up every single day, but when we do show up, it needs to be consistent, right? So if you're gonna show up three times a week, five days a week, whatever that is, it needs to be consistent. Every Monday and Wednesday, although I may be changing that to Monday and Thursdays, which is why I was hesitant to say it, but for now, every Monday and Wednesday, I'm putting out a YouTube video. And so every Monday and Wednesday, you can expect to have a new video. I'm showing up consistently, and that doesn't mean I'm showing up every day. It means I'm showing up every Monday and every Wednesday. And there's a lot of pressure put on us. And as moms, we just can't be on 24 seven. We can't. So showing up consistently doesn't mean showing up every day. It means showing up consistently where it matters in the actions that you're taking, in the relationships that you're building, in the message that you're putting out. That is where consistency matters. And when you release that pressure of consistency means I have to show up every day, you will start showing up consistently. We're halfway there. And the next word I wanna talk about is authentic. Being authentic, authenticity, right? Again, another key word that we hear all the time, show up as yourself. And I think that what we need to learn is what it actually means to show up as yourself, right? Because authentic can mean different things, right? You can show up authentically as the business person you are, right? And that sometimes makes us feel like it means professional. It needs to be raw. We need to be like uncovering all the deepest layers of our truth. That's authentic, right? No, right? Showing up authentically for me means that my business is an extension of who I am. And so it's a lot easier for me to show up consistently because I can show up authentically, right? I am just showing up as me. My brand is me, my business is me, and I am my business. So I share about homeschooling because that's a part of who I am. And that's also authentically related to the message I put out because I am teaching my moms how to create 
businesses that create time and money simultaneously. So I wanna show them what I do with the time I've created. I homeschool. And so when I really kind of just tore down what it meant to be authentic, I used to kind of not hide the pieces of homeschooling, but I just didn't think they were relevant. I was like, eh, like who wants to hear about that? And then I realized, wait a minute, that's a part of me. That's a part of my business. The way I run my business, like 100% has to do with because, you know, I homeschool, right? Like they're intertwined, right? I have uncovered a mama and business strategy based on the circumstances that I lived through, right? Having to have the time to homeschool my children. And so it's 100% relevant. So authentic doesn't mean having to like, again, dig deep and uncover all of the different layers of your life. And it doesn't mean professional, right? Authentic. It doesn't mean all of the different things that you might think it means. It means whatever it means for you to show up as you not having to get all ready and done up to show up for your audience, sharing the shows that you like, sharing the books that you're reading, sharing who you are as a person is going to build no like and trust, right? They need to know you first. They need to like who you are as a person, what you stand for, and not just like what you stand for in philosophically and like important matters, but even within your business, right? Like what I stand for in my business is I don't think that moms should be building one-on-one practices, right? Just fully booked out, get all the one-on-one clients you need because I think that that just is like the recipe for failure, right? Because you end up um, reaching your capacity before you actually reach your income goals. But that's another video for another day, right? But like, that's me authentically showing up as me and telling my audience what I don't believe in, what I do believe in, and why I believe in what I believe in. So figure out a way for you to show up authentically by building that know, like, and trust. What are the pieces of you that are relevant to your audience, right? And not relevant just as far as the business is concerned, but even as you as a person. Okay, are you still with me? The next word is niche. Niching down. So many people have so much stress and anxiousness about this word because the pressure is just ah, like you can feel it. You can feel the pressure when somebody tells you that you need to niche not you need to niche down or like the riches are in the niches. I say niche, by the way, but niche niche. You got it. Here's the thing. People think that when they niche down, they are boxing themselves in, right? That they're leaving money on the table. I hear you. That being said, when you have a niche, there's no denying that it's easier to build your business. However, a niche doesn't mean who you're helping, your target audience, or what your title is, right? And a lot of times people get that confused and they think that a niche is their title, right? Like, I'm a business strategist. Or they think I'm a business strategist for mom entrepreneurs, right? And that's my niche. Like I can only help mom entrepreneurs who are in business. And while that is my preference for sure, it's not my niche, right? My niche is helping mom entrepreneurs, right? Moms in business create businesses that build time and money simultaneously, right? I help my moms implement the mama strategy that I have created because I know that that's what's going to help them create six figure and beyond businesses. That's my niche right? Your niche is the result and the transformation that you guide your clients through. That's what you're niching down into, the result, the transformation. That's the thing that people want to come to you for. So you can help all different kinds of ideal clients. You can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, but the result is the same. What they come to you for, what they want your help with, the problem that you solve, the solution that you bring to the table that is your niche and when you can niche down to a result you can talk about anything and everything right it's why i can talk about homeschooling even though i'm a business strategist because i create time and money simultaneously and like i said before talking about what i do with my time is relatable right it's relevant people need to hear that and so i can relate homeschooling to the business model that i teach and my philosophies in business because there's that connection there, because I didn't niche down into who I was helping or how I was helping them. I niche down into the result that I am guiding them to. And now I can talk about that however I want. I'm not boxing myself in. I'm not leaving money on the table. In fact, I am making it so that I can talk about anything and everything. 
as long as I can relate it back down to this one transformation and result that I help my clients with. So I hope that that's helpful in allowing you to see, oh, okay, niching down doesn't have to make me feel smaller. It actually is making it bigger, right? The possibilities are endless. Sometimes we look at niching down and we think like we're making, you know, we're making the net too small, right? Like I can't, I'm going to cast this net and it's a smaller net that I'm casting. However, the larger net that you're casting has a lot of holes in it, right? This smaller net is actually going to catch the people that you want to talk to, that you want to work with. So niching down doesn't have to be scary. It's just actually you getting clear on what it is you help your clients with, what it is that you can help them bring about and telling them exactly that. All right, and the last one I think we kind of need to talk about is the word priorities. Priorities, oh gosh. Here's the thing, I think that the message out there for moms is that we need to be prioritizing our family. And I fully believe that and wholeheartedly believe that, right? Like my family is my everything. They are the reason why I do what I do because of the life I want to create with them, because of the memories I want to make with them, the opportunities I want them to be able to have, like the freedom to travel, the freedom to teach them and to learn with them. Like my family is my priority. However, the way that the world and society is telling us to really understand what priority means, it's making us think that prioritizing our business isn't prioritizing our children. But here's the fact of the matter. My business has to succeed in order for me to be able to prioritize my family. We need to pay the bills. Like that's just fact, right? And so if I don't prioritize my business, then I'm not prioritizing my children, right? My business benefits my children. Me investing time and energy and money into my business is a direct effect on my children, on the life that they live, on being able to eat, on being able to have... I was going to say heat, but we live in Hawaii, so that's no longer <laughs> a requirement. Air, right? Our air conditioning and our fans. In order for them to have running water, like in order for my children to survive, my business needs to survive, especially because this business is our sole income. My husband and I both work in my business. So prioritizing my business is in fact prioritizing my children and my family. And so I need to actually pour into my business so that it can pour into my family. And so while it's not like this big shift, I think it's a big enough shift where we need to see that prioritizing our business so that we can create the business that we need to sustain our family is in fact prioritizing our children. So the next time somebody tries to make you feel shame or guilt for working on your business instead of being with your children, let them know that this is a priority because your children are a priority and they go hand in hand. All right, mama, that is what I have for you today. I hope that going over these words has been encouraging for you, has gotten the wheel spinning on the way that you can show up in your business, right? Without hustling, but taking enough action, simplifying by not doing less, but figuring out a simpler way to do more, showing up authentically, showing up consistently, niching down so that you are making your work easier for you to actually accomplish and prioritizing your business because prioritizing your business is in fact prioritizing your children. So if this was helpful, I do actually have a free training that I think would be perfect for you to watch that complements what I talked about here. It's called Mamas Do It Different and it's all about the mama and business strategy that I myself have implemented in both of my six figure businesses. It's basically what I believe is the reason why I found the success I found because I take into account the fact that I am a mom and then figured out a way to make my strategy work for me and my situation. And I would love to share that with you. Again, it's a free training, so I will drop the link down below. Give it a, give it a watch, right? I think that it'll be really helpful. And again, if this was helpful, that's going to be even more helpful. Also, if this was helpful and you enjoyed this video and you've been enjoying my videos thus far, I would love for you to give a follow to this page. I'm having so much fun just creating content for you. I will drop the latest video right here for you to see and I will see you in the next video.